So what is going on with the equity markets in your estimation? Because they really did have a remarkable November, and it doesn't look like they're really backing off much so far in December. That's right. Not only did equity markets overall have a remarkable November, but small caps in the European markets had their best month almost on record ever. So it's really extraordinary. Look, the market's pricing in a couple of things. The first is the de-risking around the election and really a market-friendly outcome in the way the, the election wound up. So that was the first bit of news in the beginning of November. And then, of course, there was Vaccine Monday, four Mondays in a row, where we had better-than-expected vaccine news on different vaccines globally. And the market has almost immediately priced in a better-than-expected 2021, particularly the second half. And that's what we're seeing here, and we're seeing it on the yield curve as well. Well, particularly in the second half, as you just said, I think that's, that's important because at the same yeah. time we're seeing this going forward, sometime in the middle of next year, we hope we'll get the vaccine widely distributed. We also have all sorts of people, government officials and others saying we have a month or two months, maybe even three, that's going to be really rough and could be particularly rough in the economy. Is the, is the market really accounting for that? It's a great question. Look, we, we are calling this the air pocket. And it's kind of like the December into January, February air pocket. Maybe not so much noticeable in all of the fourth quarter, but certainly you exit the fourth quarter weaker than you started it. And you enter 2021 on a slightly weaker footing just because as we have vaccines coming to help the individuals and people and the economy, there's more of an impetus to actually slow down economic activity now to prevent spread. So that, there's that weird push-pull. I think for the most part, the market will look through any kind of economic weakness because markets tend to project forward six to 12 months ahead. And what the market is telling us is the second half of 2021 could be a boom. And I think that's something to keep in mind. So will we have volatility? Yes, we'll have volatility. You know, markets don't go straight up. There'll be some reversion to the mean as we move above the 200-day moving average so dramatically. But the message here really is, is that better days are ahead and that dips and consolidations are eminently viable here. So, so Alicia, I'm curious uh, about the air pocket and particularly do we need a cushion on the air pocket here on balance power we spent a lot of time talking about washington and public policy there's a back and forth continuing even right to today about whether we get some sort of stimulus bill further fiscal stimulus bill how important is that to the market actually or is it basically lost in the rounding so I think it's really important. I think it's part of the reason that we saw yields move yesterday. And one of the most important things that President-elect Joe Biden said yesterday was that it was important to move now and maybe and there'll be more stimulus later once he's in office. And what that did is give the House Democrats and Nancy Pelosi permission to negotiate something smaller than what the, what, what the House had passed back in June, which was the HEROES Act. And so, therefore, we're looking at something close to 500 to a trillion dollars in the lame duck session. I think it's actually possible here, only because it does it does get funded by that 450 billion coming out of the earmarked money for the Fed that goes back into Congress's hands, and it can be earmarked towards a stimulus bill. And then you've got the 500 from the Senate that McConnell said he's been willing to use. So they, that gets you close to a trillion. The market will see that as very positive because essentially the market was not expecting anything in the lame duck session. 